Hey amazing hackers, I'm Tor Hat from HM Cyber Academy. We're gonna continue with our incredible Narnia series. Here, you're gonna learn exploit development or you will die trying. So let's get started. So this is the last level in the series and this is amazing. So buckle your seat belts and get excited. So SSH, Narnia 8, paste the password, clear, go to the location, ls-l. Let's try to execute Narnia 8, okay? So Narnia 8, so it's expecting an argument. So let's give some argument. Okay, it's just replying. So it's just replying back our argument. So let's give some more data and see what happens. After some time, the data is getting converted into something else. So let's give some more data and see what happens. So there's something being changed, but most of the data is kind of same. Okay, so it cannot read the data. So let's check the code. So cat this. Let's start with main function. It is expecting some argument. If there are some arguments, it's gonna execute this func function or else it's gonna just print the usage. So let's see this func function and this func function takes the argument that we have given. So let's see that. And this argument is going into this particular location. And this is again storing into this particular pointer or you can say character array. Okay, so this is another character array which can hold 20 bytes of data. All the size of the box is set to zero. Okay, so all the memory inside this box is contained zero. Okay, so after this, there is a for loop in which all the data in the blah is sent into this box byte by byte not all at once but byte by byte okay so once this is done whatever is in the box is going to be printed out so that's what happened over here okay it's just printing out but there's something that's just blocking okay so let's find out using gdb okay so gdb narnia 8 let's say to open it quietly so hit y so where is the vulnerability so if you check there is no restriction of how much blah can be sent into box. So this is where the vulnerability is. So this B is sent into blah and this B is taken from the argument. So we can control this blah. Okay. We can try to overflow this box using this blah. So this is where the vulnerability is. So as you can see, the main function does not have much. Okay. Only in the func function, we can find some vulnerability. So we have to disassemble this func function. So disassemble func. So as you can see, so this is the mem set where all bytes of box is set to zero. Once that is done, everything is sent into box. And once it is done, it is going to print box. Okay. We'll just keep a breakpoint just after this print function. Okay. Somewhere around here. So we can say break at func plus 110. Let's run with random arguments. All right, we hit a breakpoint. So let's examine 20 words of memory from stack pointer. So we can see that our four bytes of A has been moved into the memory, but we can accommodate 20 bytes of data into box. Okay, let's check what we have in registers. If you type in for registers, as you can see, this is the stack pointer which starts from here so that's what we have expected as well and this is the base pointer okay so basically base pointer is just like a copy of of stack pointer okay so we can just ignore it whenever this comes okay but we have to see in memory where this actually locates okay so it says d33c okay d33c located here Okay, which means this is the EBP. So we'll just keep that in mind. And remember that this ESP and EPP both are same, but EBP is like a backup of ESP. If we want to change this memory address, we can keep some random characters over here. So what do we see after this EBP? So we have this thing, right? Let's see what this is. Examine word in memory, and this is the location. Okay, as you can see, it says that it is main plus 23. 
okay so we haven't seen what is inside main okay so let's check that so as you can see main plus 23 is a return of func function okay so this is kind of a return address of func so let's make a note of what we have seen so far okay so we have seen a box array which contains 20 bytes of data and we have seen some address okay so we don't know what that is so that contains 4 bytes of data and next we have seen that ebp exists and this one has 4 bytes of data and next we have return address so return address of func so this also contains 4 bytes of data so what is this one so let's check that so this is that address just after box okay let's copy this and let's examine what we have here so looks like we have a a a a inside this as well so let's see that in some other format so a a a a okay so this is our input right so this input is already inside box so there is only one other variable in which these a's can contain okay so if you check the code initially our input is going into b and then block so this is the memory address of block so let's copy this and replace this with star block so now we have block and we have a memory location of block we have evp and return address of func so let's check this address inside memory as well okay so how to check that we have to extend this value so we'll just say 200 and we'll just go down and see this value okay so that particular value is d588 okay so let's go there d588 so this is where our data is all right so there's one more thing we need to check we have given four a's in the beginning so let's give that one more time so let's execute and let's say 10 words of memory this time so this much is enough everything is covered over here okay so bock blah ebp and return address our point of focus is this one right now okay so we gave four a's and this is the memory address okay so let's try to give five a's and see what happens as you can see the hex value is reduced by one so let's give six a's and say yes and then say this and as you can see hex value is again decreased by one okay so what's basically happening is if you try to increase your input blah pointer is decreasing its value so keep this in mind so we need one more information that is where should we point this return function to okay so if we can control this return function we need to point it to a shell code so let's create a shell code outside gdb we are not only creating a shell code we are exporting it to environment variables okay so let's say shell code from where do we get the shell code so we can get the shell code from one of our previous levels which is 606 okay shell storm 606 will give this bash shell okay with hyphen p which would preserve effect to user id permissions okay so let's copy this and our shell code is ready initially let's keep some no operation characters okay so why do we need this no operation characters if you do not keep this no operation characters so we cannot precisely keep the exact location of start of this shell code okay so if we find out some location and if we keep the return address somewhere in the middle of this no operation characters then it will just slide down to the shell code and the shell code would execute okay so that's the main idea of this no operation characters so let's copy this let's paste it over here let's save it now we need to know where the shell code is located in memory okay so to do that let's go to gdb and you can still use any program from narnia so basically we don't want to run anything 
we just want to start the program and then get the location of the shell code okay so it's very simple to do so break main you're not executing anything you're just setting a breakpoint at main you don't want any of this program to run all you have to do is run the program once it hits the breakpoint you have to examine the string of of a pointer which is like a character that is located in environment okay so basically you're calling one of the environment variables so if you see that we got a shell but we don't want shell we want shell code okay so we want this so to get the next environment variable all you have to do is keep a plus one at the end of this statement okay so now you get shell code and you got rest of this statement as well okay so this is the actual shell code okay we don't want all these variables and everything we only want this part okay to get only this part all you have to do is take this memory and say xs and give this memory plus let's say 5 okay so you can see that this shell has been disappeared over here okay only code is there so you have to remove this code as well so this is five more characters so you have to say remove this five and keep ten and now you got the shell code so this is located in this 4a location so you copy this because this is what we need shell code location in memory so once you got this location you don't need this gdb anymore so let's exit out of here let's go back and create some payload so now we know what to do we need to target this return function and point it to this location how can we do it we will just fill this with 20 a's we'll fill this blah with some memory address by calculating what we can do okay so we'll just keep it as empty as of now and we can keep anything in this bbp so let's keep some four a's because it has four bytes of data and this is four bytes of uh, hex data okay so to get the memory location of this we have to add 20 bytes of box and four bytes of this and four bytes of this and four bytes of this okay so whenever something is added into this box this blob pointer is decreasing okay so let's add 20 a's because that's the buffer size of box so how can we do that let's say narnia let's create a subshell let's say echo hyphen e and 20 a's so let's keep that in quotations follow this with some program called xxd so this xxd program will take the output of this narnia 8 execution and give a hex dump of the memory okay so it directly gives the output from the memory so we all have this 4141414141 and then after this we have this blah pointer and after this we have ebp and then the return address of func so we are not inside gdb so these values are accurate okay since we are filling this with four a's so we don't want that and we are just overwriting this value with this value so we don't want that as well so all we care about is this blah pointer okay so let's write that 0x ff ff d5 3 8 so we got this address after we have given 20 a's okay we have to calculate what happens to this memory address when we give 4 plus 4 plus 4 12 bytes of data we have to give 12 bytes of data so when we give 12 bytes of data 12 x values of blah decreases so with this logic what we can do is let's take last two values of hex which we can represent it as 0x 38 and 12 bytes that is in decimal so 12 decimal okay so we have to convert this 12 decimal into hex okay so let's say decimal and remove this and say 12 okay so as you can see it has converted it into hex and the hex value is c okay so basically you want to remove 
zero x c from zero x thirty eight. So let's remove that, and what would be the answer? So let's go back. Let's go to hexadecimal. Let's remove this and say thirty eight minus c. Okay. So now you got two c. So let's copy that and keep it over here. So this would be given inside this memory. So let's remove this and keep this. Okay. So this would be our new memory address after we have kept all of these values. So let's build the payload. So the payload will be like twenty s. So let's fill twenty s followed by this in little Indian format, which is backslash x two c. Backslash x d five, backslash x f f, backslash x f f. Okay, and then followed by four a's, and followed by this memory address. So backslash x four a, backslash x d five, backslash x f f, backslash s f f. Okay, so this is our new payload. Okay. Let's go back. We don't need this x x t anymore. So let's remove this and paste this. So let's see what happens. So we got a message called illegal instruction. So what is an illegal instruction? So before we understand what is an Ill illegal instruction, let's see our payload. So we have filled this buffer, which is buffer of box. So we don't care about this. So this we calculated. So we don't want to worry about this as well. So this is E B P. So we don't care about this as well. So all that we need to care about is this return address. Okay. So this return address we got it from G D B. Okay. So we have to slightly adjust over here to get correct return address. Okay. So this illegal instruction is basically saying that you are giving a location in memory. And I cannot understand what to do with the data inside that memory. Okay, so that's basically illegal instruction. Okay, so let's keep changing this value slightly so that we get what we want. Okay, so we want to slightly move this forward. Okay, so why we want to slightly move this forward? So we want it to place somewhere in between this knob slide. So once it reaches one of these. Knob characters, so it will just keep sliding down until it reaches the shell code. We have changed this to 4A to 4F. So now we are getting segmentation fault, which means previously we are sending it to a location where it cannot understand what to do. But this time it tries to process it, but it cannot process it. So let's keep moving it forward. So let's keep 5F and see what happens. Okay. So we got a shell. So looks like this location has placed itself into one of these knob slides. Okay. Let's see who am I? I'm Narnia Nine. So let's get the password. Cat slash etc slash Narnia underscore pass Narnia Nine. So finally we have completed Narnia Eight. So let's try to get into Narnia Nine and see what happens. And exit. So let's go to Narnia Nine. Paste the password. So as you can see, we don't have a Narnia Nine file. Okay. So if you type ls in home directory, we have a congratulations message. So you are a lead. Next, please. So hopefully you understand how to solve this Narnia Eight. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.